Hey, welcome to my Clockwork Empires video. Uh, this is going to consist largely of me talking over Clockwork Empires. Uh, this version of the client is version 32A, released October 21st, which uh, for me was yesterday. Uh, I apologize ahead of time for my invisible mouse cursor. Uh, it's something to do with MSI Afterburner, which is what I'm using to capture this video. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's there's a hardware cursor, and MSI Afterburner doesn't bother. And anyway, um, hopefully, what I'm doing should be uh, readily apparent. Uh, hopefully, what a p prospective viewer can gather from this is maybe some tips and tricks that. Uh, you know, I and other players have gleaned over the past few months of earliest access and then early access testing of Clockwork Empires. Uh, so I'm just going to chop down some logs here. The very first thing I build is a carpentry workshop. Uh, that's because the carpentry workshop is your key to industry. The planks that you need a carpentry workshop to make are vital to the construction of other structures and other modules and other buildings. It is the cornerstone of industry. And of course, the thing you need to make a carpentry workshop go is wood. Uh, so I've begun chopping down trees as well. Now a newish thing in recent revisions uh, is the ability to place any module in any building. And that's why I'm sticking cots in this workshop. Uh, good enough. No more is gonna fit in there. Um, and this is because uh, sprinkling cots here and there helps you put off uh, having to build a, a dedicated bunkhouse for your colonists. Um, Colonists need to sleep, and when they absolutely have to sleep, they will sleep anywhere. They'll prefer to sleep indoors, and when they're indoors, they prefer to sleep on cots, or given the opportunity, beds. Um, so cots will allow a colonist to restore um, or fulfill their sleep needs at a faster rate than just sleeping on the floor, and beds are even better than cots and sleeping outside on the ground is the worst possible way to sleep. So avoid doing that. Colonists who do not have enough sleep are unhappy and that will make them more susceptible to madness, rioting, and murder. As well as, uh, maybe we'll get into this later, they are more susceptible to eldritch influences of the uh, unspeakable cosmic horrors. Oh, some rhyolite. I'm going to mine some rock here. Um, and that is because I intend to build a kitchen next. Now, the kitchen uh, will allow you to cook food, naturally. The significance of the kitchen... Uh, so you might ask, why do I need to build a kitchen? Um, you know, I can forge up these berries and this black fungus, no problem, and my colonists will eat it. All true. However, a kitchen will allow you to cook that food. Cooking the food increases its food value. I'll show you in a second. Every... Actually, I'll show you now. Oh, and that's another thing we can do in this revision. You can build a building with no modules. Uh, so I just let this go. It'll be a building with no ovens, and it won't do anything. However, uh, renovation now works. So I come back to this building and build modules in it. Anyway, so if I mouse over this bushel of lingonberries, it has a food value of 300. If I take the time to cook this bushel of lingonberries in a kitchen, it will become a crate of lingonberry preserves, delicious, and it will have a food value of 600. Meaning a colonist who eats only the raw berries will only be half as satisfied as a colonist who eats food. Now, okay, I'm gonna pause here. Um, a new thing with this revision is the ability to assign specific work crews to workshops, like I've just done. You don't assign a crew there, 
you can queue up all the orders you want, but nothing will ever get done. And here's the notification, bottom right, telling me my newly built workshop needs a work party. You may notice it is also possible to build a workshop without doors, which means these two are trapped until I put some doors in, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, the reason I was harvesting rhyolite boulders earlier uh, was in preparation for my kitchen, which can accommodate... Uh, let's not put that there. Two different kinds of ovens. There's the small stone oven and the small oven. Now, I like to start my kitchens off with a bunch of ovens. If I built all small ovens, I am rapidly consuming my precious finished resources. In this case, uh, iron plates, iron pipes, and bricks. Those are in short supply until I can start making them on my own, which is considerably later in the tech tree. However, rocks are free, and they appear everywhere. The downside, of course, is that you have to mine the rocks yourself. And that takes a little bit of time. So I go with a mix, a mix of the finished ovens and stone ovens. Uh, that's all well and good. Um, I am now going to plunk down a, another stockpile here. Now I like to separate, well, uh, yeah, I like to separate my stockpiles, which is to say, uh, I'm not speaking geographically, you know, this other stockpile will, uh, I allow everything but food in here. And this stockpile allows nothing but food, even though one of these jerks has put iron pipes in my uh, jam storage. The reason I like to do it that way uh, is so uh, I can see at a glance how much food I have. I've got bushels of black fungus and berries and stuff mixed in amongst my bricks and copper plates. I won't be able to see immediately how much food I have. But as you can see here, with the food only store pile, or stock pile, Connus will dump it in here and it's directly adjacent to the kitchen, uh, so it's convenient for them to get to, and uh, they can cook and I can see. I like to put multiple doors on my buildings as well, just because colonists in doorways will actually block each other. Someone's inside trying to get out, and someone's outside trying to get in uh, through the same door. They will bump into each other, and they'll path around trying to find a doorway out, and it just creates congestion. Traffic problems. You don't need those, right? So, uh, another thing to consider is how many jobs you're loading down your colonists with. If you look at the workroom menu here, you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, well, a total of six crews, but the sixth crew is composed entirely of soldiers. Soldiers will do hauling jobs, that is to say they will pick up crap from the ground and bring it to your stockpile. Uh, and they will uh, also do, they will also tend to farming jobs, uh, which I should already have gotten to actually, I'll get back to that in a second. The other crews will actually perform workshop jobs, like making planks, or cooking in this case. So I have five workshop crews, workshop capable crews, and as such, I don't want, I typically don't want more than five, well I don't want too many jobs queued up in the job menu here. You can't see my mouse pointer, but I am scrolling up and down this empty window. And the reason for not having too many jobs is because they'll tend to interfere with each other. A colonist will rush off to haul some timber back, then he'll be called to cook, but the cooks will be waiting on someone else to haul the fungus back. Um, and it just creates inefficiency. So what I like to do is to limit the number of jobs. like to limit the number of jobs. You can't have too many jobs running simultaneously anyway, given the na limited nature uh, of the, uh, the manner in which a job crew works and the ability of um, the ability the number of simultaneous jobs you can have running uh, thanks to your limited number of work crews. 
I hope that sentence made sense. Right, I've got one oven made. Uh, maybe I'll see what I can cook. Uh, let's queue up some berries. Mm -hmm. New thing this patch, 32A, introduce pies. Delicious pies. Pie, uh, pies are a tertiary food? Like this lingonberry pie. It needs um, a crate of lingonberry preserves. And a, ling a crate of lingonberry preserves requires a bushel of lingonberries. Uh, oh, just lingonberries. So what you're getting out of it is increased food value. The uh, pie has a food value of 850, which is a ton. A ton more than raw berries, which is uh, a food value of 150, I believe. And the crate, the intermediate step, the crate of lingonberry preserves has a food value of 600. So if your colonists aren't starving and you have the time to make fancy three-step food, you should do so because everyone likes a full stomach. The advantage of having uh, high food value foods is that your colonists will stay full, they will stay sated for longer, which means um, which means you basically you need to spend less time farming and foraging. Right? If you're... Uh, ooh. See down, bottom right, I have imminent grints. Let's take a look at this. I don't want to take any more overseers at the moment. I'm just going to pause for a second. I don't want any more overseers because they don't come with any workers. So I get one overseer, and then I have to spread... I have to find him workers out of my existing crews. Uh, which means, you know, if these guys are hauling wood or something, there's only one or two of them. I like to have work crews of at least three people. Uh, all my workers to have at least three people before I get any more overseers. So instead, I'm going to take the option to take three of anyone. Which sometimes comes with an overseer. Now you'll notice only two guys appeared in the unassigned workers section, and that's because new workers are sometimes automatically assigned to work crews, and if one of your immigrants is a soldier, he gets automatically assigned under an NCO. So let's just put them in here for now. Now I haven't assigned any work crews to this kitchen, so Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker's Tasteful Steam Crew, you shall be my cooks. All right, I've got some lingonberry preserves queued up. Uh, time to build those farms. Actually, I should have started on those earlier. One maximum size farm. Cabbage. I like to start the game with two farm plots. I think that provides me a good balance between uh, labor and food production. The thing about farms is that they will periodically require colonists to come and tend them, but not all the time. Uh, so you need a bit of unassigned sort of floating work crews available to do stuff like hauling and harvesting. You can kind of think of every two farm plots as one permanently assigned work crew. So you don't want to build if you build so many farm plots that uh, all your colonists are occupied all the time, your other production will suffer. There will be fewer people available to saw planks, chop trees, fight fishmen, that sort of thing. Alright, next building uh, is going to be... now is probably a good time to build a real bunkhouse. Uh, one handy tip that I have taken from uh, Dwarf Fortress is that a good way to gauge the number of beds you need for your colony is simply to build some and then see how they're used. Which is to say, get some down, right? And then if all your beds are occupied all the time, it's time to build more beds. If they're only half occupied at the worst of times, then that should be fine. Uh, you can... Uh, I should have built that bunkhouse bigger. Uh, then you're probably okay with the number of beds you have. Oh, bottom right, look at that. I have a supply drop incoming. I could actually use more food, I think. Don't need any guns right now. I think I have more than enough guns for my three soldiers. 
Food is a more pressing concern than building materials. As you can see right there, Ye Old Empire has airdropped up sausages and bread. That'll tide me over for a bit. So the kitchen crew has finished cooking that small order of lingonberries. Let's queue up a few more. Uh, one thing that's clearly a bug is uh, this line of text is too long for this for this row and disappears under these buttons. Kind of sucks. Just count my clicks. All right, queued up some black fungus. Queued up some uh, lingonberry preserves. The bunkhouse is under construction. How are we doing for jobs? Well. I do have a crew that's not, at least one crew that's not doing anything. Given, because they they don't have a discrete task, um, they're hauling this wood that I chopped earlier. And you'll see the rhyolite uh, boulders that I harvested for stone blocks have been turned into small ovens. A significant change that came in in revision 32 was the ability to interleave cooking jobs. Uh, which is to say, when somebody, prior to Revision 32, when somebody wanted to turn a bushel of lingonberries into a crate of lingonberry preserves, you'd grab one of these out of the stockpile, bring it to a stove, and watch them boil on the stove for the entire period until it was done. Then they grab the finished food product and take it back to the stockpile. That tied up a worker for the entire length of time it took to cook a single thing. With Revision 32, uh, as it says in the patch notes, it is no longer to watch pots to see them boil. <laughs> it's no longer necessary to watch things cooking. A worker will take a food item, stick it in the oven, and then go wander off and do something else, probably cooking related. Uh, these cast iron pots that have suddenly appeared on these stoves mean that uh, one of the workers has reserved one of, the, one of each of these stoves for cooking purposes. Here we go, and we've got some lingonberries on the boil. And who's this guy? Gilbert Walker has left these to cook. And, well, okay, he's aimlessly wandering the colony, but I like to think he was trying to path find his way to another job. And his job was eating, sticking his face in a bucket of sausages. I guess I don't blame him. All right, so the bunkhouse has been built. Uh, we've got the uh, carpentry workshop going, and we've got the kitchen up and running. Oh, we are very short on planks. Uh, let's queue up some more. I think we're good for wood. All right, we're in a good position to build another building. Time for the ceramics workshop. Now these red areas are bumpy, hilly areas where you can't put things. You can't build anything, actually. Uh, you can, as of the last couple of revisions, flatten the land. Uh, but I'll get back to that. Um, now the ceramics workshop turns turns sand into glass and turns, more importantly, turns clay into bricks. Now it has an option for the ceramics kiln or the stone ceramics kiln. And like the stone oven and real oven in the kitchen, uh, this one uses your precious uh, finished resources, the ones you brought over with you from the colony. And this one's just made out of rock that I've found on the ground. Now I don't have enough rock to build this kiln, the stone kiln, so I'm going to build this one. It should be okay. I, there are clay deposits. I can make more bricks after this is done building also requires a workbench and uh, I'm going to give it a rolly door because I like them. Loading bay doors. They were gone for a while but now they're back. And while we're here I'm going to stick a an entire bed in here. Yes that's right I hope somebody likes their workshop bed. Beds provide a better environment for resting than cots. So if you've got plenty of wood and plenty of space, you know, concerned about tying up your workers, um, you know, beds are the way to go. So 
So, I'm a little concerned we haven't seen any fishmen yet. I'm afraid they're brewing up a giant invasion or something. So here's how fishmen invasions work. Periodically, there's a chance for fishmen to attack you. If they do not, that intensity, or er, that increases the intensity of the next fishmen attack. And if that attack doesn't trigger, that increases the intensity of the next attack after that, etc., etc. So it's possible not to see many fishmen for a long time and then get a giant wave of them. Ah, someone's been talking about. Oh my God, Vesta Thompson. You sure like talking about that foul and pestilent architecture? I think you need to die. It's better to nip these things in the bud. Observe, I've marked her for our frontier justice, which means she will be summarily executed by my, by the brave soldiers of the Empire. Um, but also, she now has the frontier justice flag over her head. And that's a new thing with the latest revision. And now she's just fleeing for her life. Not entirely uh, inappropriate. Uh, food production. A little disappointing you can see here. Um, food stocks are running a bit low. It's easy to see at a glance since I have a food stockpile. Wait a second. There's a, there are a ton of lingonberries out here. 29 bushels, in fact. Oh, I will get to this in a second. I have another shipment of colonists. Take a quick look here. Oh, I think I can still use three more of anyone. There's a chance you'll get an overseer with the three of anyone option, which is why I'm a bit more comfortable putting off requesting, uh, specifically requesting an overseer. Right, I've assigned all the new immigrants. Vesta. Oh, what is this? New behavior. Fanny Brazen Woodcotter. She is participating in the Frontier Justice uh, because she is a criminal element and more likely to tend to violence. I believe that was new with the latest revision. So Fanny Woodcotter is going to bludgeon Vesta to death with her wood uh, with her construction hammer. Here come the Oceanus Smith has come to bludgeon her to death with his musket balls. And justice is served. Right. So that her corpse does not disturb the rest of my colonists, I'm going to need to bury Vesta. And to do that, I'm going to need to designate an area for a graveyard. I know it looks like a field, but trust me, I will not be growing anything there. Now that I have a corpse and a graveyard, the burial duties job has been spontaneously created in the job queue. Here we go, good old, uh, oh no, it's not our pal Oceanus, it's Leland. Leland Whistlecotter is going to bury the corpse. The wheat fields and the cabbage patch look like they're coming in nicely. Hopefully we'll be able to rely on them instead of making my colonists wander halfway across the map to pick berries. That'll save a lot of time. And the less time spent on overhead, like travel time, the more productive your colony can be. Right, well, I think this is a good place to save. Uh, the colony uh, looks stable. Nothing, uh, and we've only had one murder. So there you go. My name has been Alfred. Uh, you can find me active on the Gas Slap Games official forums under the name Alifred. Uh, witty, I know. And occasionally I also uh, try to dispense help in the Clockwork Empire's Steam discussion pages. Uh, I <laughs> so there you go. And that was me talking over the first little bit of Clockwork Empires. Well, have a good one.